Hey, welcome back. I wanted to do something new, uh, a series on tool grinding, which in each, each installment I will show a different type of tooling that I need to grind, usually for myself because I do not do uh, tool grinding uh, for customers, not a grinding shop. And I will be using Surface Grinder, Tool and Cutter Grinder, and my D-Bit Grinder. That's the main tools that I'm using for grinding. Maybe I will show some offhand grinding on Bench Grinder, and we might do some on the milling machine if things like that come up. So this one here starts with two drills. I have these two carbide twist drills, short length, which are through coolant. That means they have a channel that goes from the tip of the drill all the way through the spiral to the back of the drill. And if you have a milling machine or a CNC mill with through spindle coolant, you can shoot high pressure coolant through the drill out here. This helps cooling the cut and most of it is uh, washing out the chips through the flute strip back. If you run a through coolant machine, you can drill with these uh, usually three times or five times in one, in one step and do not have to pack drill or something like that. They're pretty cool. Uh, I obviously don't have a, a through coolant machine, but they are still useful for me because they are carbide. I touched this one already up. Um, from the factory, this, this, these drills have a four facet grind. They have a primary relief, that's this face here, this narrow band here, same on this side. And they have a secondary relief, that's this steeper uh, facet here to the back. And the trick with four facet grind is all these four flats, this, 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 and this, they all meet in one point, right here in the center. Uh, this one has a thinned web, web uh, in addition, but you can get along without that. And this, this grind is what we're going to replicate. The most important thing when you set up for doing a four facet grind and you grind the first, the, you grind the primary relief here first and the cutting edge, which is up here, and this intersection of the two flats here should be parallel. These two edges here should be parallel. Then your geometry is pretty much correct. Uh, on the left one is the original geometry unground, but dull. Uh, you can see if you look closely that there is a, a highlight around this cutting edge, and that's the wear. We're going to do this on the D-bit grinder. First thing we want to know is the included angle on the drill tip. On a normal high-speed steel twist drill, that's 118 degrees. With the carbide drills, parabolic fluid, uh, HPC drill, drills and stuff like that, um, all bets are off. You need to measure the angle. So a very simple angle protractor is good enough. And this is 135 degree drill. So that's what we're going to grind. The primary relief here usually has a, a, a clearance angle of about eh, four to five degrees. The, the secondary relief usually is about 15 to 20 degrees. So let's go to the deepest grinder and set this up. Okay, here is the almighty D-bit grinder. Um, we're going to hold the drill in a regular collet right here. For now, we just drop it in and hold it lightly. We need to adjust it later anyway. The tip angle is set here. As I said, it's a 135 degree drill. We get uh, 180 minus 135. That's our tip angle. The, uh, equals 45 divided by 2 is 22 and a half. And the 22 and a half is what we have to set it to. This is the upper joint to set the, the tip angle of the drill. We start at 90 and go backwards. So 90, 
it's 10, 20, 22 and a half. Lock it. Down here, we set the clearance angle of the drill. As we're grinding the primary flat, we set this to four degrees now. Okay, locked. And then we position the whole workhead here on the main axle by sliding it back and forth so we can get the drill tip to the diamond wheel we were using. Uh, the most important setting basically is to get this edge here, which is the cutting edge, reasonably horizontal. And I tried many ways, but the easiest thing to do is to, to get it relatively close to the grinding wheel. And then we use a, a scale and we drop it on top of the cutting edge. And then we just rotate the drill for a, for a visual horizontal orientation. I was thinking about making some kind of a jig, but this usually works good enough. If anything, you want it to be a little bit higher on the outside. So the, the scale is looking down a little bit because we're grinding off material and that will pull the cutting edge down. Here again is the cutting edge and the way I place the scale over it, just like this. And it doesn't look horizontal for you because the camera is tilted at a very weird angle. But this is, this is what we're looking at. You also want to be sure that the, the dividing head of the D-bit grinder is set to zero or any other convenient number. So we can alternate between zero and 180 when you grind the two cutting edges. I said it before and I say it again. Carbide dust is bad for you. Use dust extraction, wear a dust mask, whatever you need to do, but don't brief that stuff. Okay, I'm going to try to show it to you to that way. Um, I'm going to grind one, fat, one side of the drill by infeeding here on this hand wheel, which moves this whole axis with the work head side to side. Then I'm going to spin this 180 and grind the, the, the other cutting edge with the same uh, C setting. This is basically C axis on this grinder because it's in line with the main spindle. Dust extraction and hearing protection. <laughs> the grinder itself is not very loud, but the dust extraction screams like crazy. Okay, that's it. That was grinding the, the primary relief. So the primary relief here is now way larger than before because we removed material and pulled the whole surface back. We cleaned up the cutting edges. Feels nice and sharp now. And now we need to regrind the secondary relief. If we do not regrind the secondary relief, chances of the drill bit hitting somewhere on this primary relief surface when we drill into the material and just rub and not cut the material are relatively high. You could figure this out in, in CAD, model it up and look how large this primary relief could be max maximum before the drill doesn't cut anymore and it rubs only on this surface. 
The only thing that we have to change for the secondary relief is this angle down here. We change this to 15 degrees, which is about this. Lock it. Get our work head here back to zero. By changing this angle, now we are about a metric mile away from the grinding wheel. So we loosen this down here and we bring it back in almost contact, lock it. I like to grind in a way that where my drill swipes completely past the grinding wheel, like this. And this is this adjustment down here. So this is the second most tricky operation on doing a four facet grind. We want, as I showed you earlier, the four flats that we're grinding to meet in one point in the center. And that is a bit um, experience and a bit you try and error. So we start again by grinding and we do not infeed that much. Getting our dust extraction in would be nice. Okay, I had it pretty pretty darn close here in the first try. Uh, this, this, this and this, they all meet pretty much perfectly in this one point here in the center, right here. So if that was not the case and this flat would be not far enough, you could just regrind it and move it in further. If you're past the point, you would have to regrind the primary flat. This is this one here to get it back so it meets up in one point. If you, if you have it not meet up perfectly, you end up with something like a chisel point on a regular, very standard like drill bit and they tend to wander. These don't tend to wander off, even if you do not center punch or center drill. So that was basically all the magic about the four facet grind on this carbide drill. Test drilling, uh, mild steel. This is an 8.7 millimeter carbide drill that we just reground in order to the test hole and drill is quite nice. Uh, no spot drilling, no center drilling, nothing, just hitting it at a thousand RPM uh, drive for now. Usually, with a little bit of coolant, they drill even nicer. Normally, I wouldn't use it on, on, on mild steel. I, I keep the, the carbide drills for special occasions. Uh, when I do, when I have to drill something hardened, hardened tool steel or when I'm doing multiple operations on multiple parts and I don't and I want to skip the, the spot drilling. These are very rigid and will keep a very good hole location without spotting. Especially with the four facet grind uh, they don't tend to walk away. Hey is that a new vice? 
Yes, that's a new one. That's a Girardi modular vice. I will do a separate video on this vice once I have more time on it, but so far I like it. I misspoke when I said the diameter of the drill. It's an 8.2, not an 8.7. So let's check the diameter we get with this drill after regrinding the tip. Uh, that's a good indicator if we did did it properly. If you grind it off center, they tend to drill oversize. I have a three point internal micrometer here. And it reads. Oh, that's pretty good. Slightly below 8.21, so drilled 10 micron oversize. Pretty good for a carbide drill in a manual mill. Of course, the surface finish of a drill bit is not as good as with an ream or single point boring it, so we get a little bit of inconsistency in the diameter. Here it's 8.19. This one is also 8.91. eight point nine one and a little bit of change <laughs> so yeah drills pretty much on size for a drill bit that's that's pretty much it7 tolerance class which is really darn good for drilling you can get drills that are even more precise than this they drill proper gauge fits without any precaution but not on the manual mill <laughs> so you see two Carbide drills roughly the same diameter, about 5.5 millimeters. And this one over here still has the the third flat, which is basically thinning the, the web or splitting the point. And this one over here needed so much regrinding that this uh, third face here is completely gone. The question now is how much difference this makes. The problem with this flat here is you cannot do this on the D-bit grinder, at least not uh, in a machine guided way. You could do it offhand, but that's be beyond the point of using a machine machine to regrind the drill. You would have to go on a real tool and cutter or a surface grinder to do this. So let's see if this drill without Splitting the point still works reasonably well for our purposes. It doesn't, I can feel the machine shake a little bit more without the the thinned web on this drill uh, on when hitting the starting point you would use a spotting drill if if the web of the drill was not split so let's try it as a higher rpm Yeah, the higher RPM doesn't make much difference except for a larger mess when using coolant. Uh, that was 3000 RPM in the second try and 1000 RPM at the first try. So you would use this drill with a spotting drill if, if, if the web is not thinned. Otherwise it tends to, to walk around a little bit. So I wasn't too happy with the with the grind on this right drill with the unthinned web. They work, and I used them before, but it's not perfect, or not, not as good as I would like it. Um, so I played a little bit around, and I replicated 
the original thinned web of such a carbide drill like this one here on the left which has this large uh, gash cut into it and I replicated it on this one here and this thins the web by a lot and by running this on the mill to drilling uh, it's like it's a, a difference between those two styles of night and day. If you look at this one, the right one, we have this large web here, which is not really cutting. Um, it's highly negative cutting action. It's scraping and pushing the material away and needs a lot of force. It's not a problem if you can pre-drill with a small drill, but with such a, this is already a 5.5 millimeter drill, so usually you do not pre-drill this. Uh, this one over here, this one has a very, very small web and the cutting edge is positive all the way up to here. Then we have a neutral cutting angle. Neutral is okay. Neutral cuts steel and most materials perfectly fine. But we do not have this, this humongous uh, heavy negative uh, chisel point here or web. So I cannot do this on the D-bit grinder. This can, I, I did this on my large tool grinder. You can also do it on surface grinder, perfectly fine. Or if you're brave on a milling machine. Carbide drill 5.5 millimeter with a thinned web done in my own shop. Uh, running at a thousand RPM, mild steel again. Very happy with that result. Uh, cutting forces compared to the unthinned web is really, really remarkable. So that's a good way to do it. And I guess you want to see how I do this. Okay, that's the setup here in the tool cutter grinder. I have the standard spin fixture or dividing head here. It's aligned in this direction with the travel of the table, so it's set to zero degrees and it's tilted back by 28 degrees. I'm not sure about the, the back angle that usually is used for thinning the web, but um, that's currently the most of back angle I can get. A little bit more would probably be nice, something like 35 or 40 degrees. And I have a ER16 collet chuck in here for work holding. The diamond, the, the work head with the spindle is aligned in this direction and the spindle is, is also aligned uh, for tilt to be horizontal. Uh, running a diamond wheel, a standard straight diamond wheel, 1A1 shape. And I have a dust extraction here right in the way. So let's, let's put this drill in here. Not worried about orientation right now. We can do that after I clamped it. There we go. And now once again we have to align the cutting edges to be horizontal. You get a, f a frontal view onto the drill bit and I can rotate it like this. And you see the two main cutting edges down here and up here. And we want those two cutting edges now to be reasonably uh, parallel. Uh, not parallel, horizontal. I'm just stacking up a bunch of parallels and I rest a uh, scale on top of it. And I can use that as a reference to adjust my cutting edges. 
just visually. Maybe add one more parallel as a spacer. That's too thick. Okay, that's that's a good height. Yeah, that's reasonably parallel. This small dark section up here that you can see, that's the cutting edge. What I'm doing now is I set the dial of the indexing head to zero. The dial for the spindle, that is. And now I'm spinning the whole spindle of the indexer 20 degrees to the left. Where I got the 20 degree angle from? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Uh, by looking at existing commercial drill bits. I have, to, I have to play around in CAD to figure out the real angles. But for now, for, for testing and uh, learning how to grind this, this will do. And now we will just come in with a grinding wheel and nip this corner here off. And we will go up right to the center of the drill. We will stay a little bit shy both in feed wise and down feed wise. Okay, uh, this large thing that you see here, that's a grinding wheel. Not that I'm concerned about putting my camera right in the firing line of the grinding wheel, but I am concerned. But it will be all right. Uh, it will be, we're moving the the table of the grinder now towards the grinding wheel and I'm just eyeballing the center of the drill now. And I should probably set a table stop so I do not run into the collar chuck. good and probably a second stop so I don't run into my camera which would also be quite tragic there we go okay travel is limited Okay, ground the first side, and when we spin the tool around, you can see our the, the relief cut that I did here. Now I spin it around 180 degrees, and we do the exact same grind. We can take this material off in one cut by slowly creep feeding into it.
There we go. And the nice thing about this setup here on the on the tool cutter grinder, uh, once you have established your your side to side travel, you just have to switch through the drills you want to to thin the web and just control your down feed. This is another drill. This is a high speed steel parabolic flute drill that I also did four facet grind on, and I'm in the process, or better said, I already thinned the web and I stopped mid-process to show you the position of the grinding wheel in relation to the center web of the drill. And as you can see, didn't show this on the last one very good, I, I overshot it. Um, I'm staying a tiny tiny bit clear of the center web this direction. So we do not overshoot it. We just nip it very, very lightly, so it cuts it down. And that results in this... This very nice geometry on the drill. Which works beautifully. Um, I think I'm... In the future I'm definitely going with this style of grind if I have to regrind the drill. Of course, from a viability standpoint, um, it's questionable. But a good carbide drill costs 20, 30, 50 bucks. Even a good parabolic flute drill like this, high-speed steel, costs five to 15 bucks. All in euros, of course. Um, so, batching them up and regrinding them really can pay off. <laughs> Once you have all your machines dirty and set up, it's not that bad to do the regrind. And the thinning the web on the uh, tool and cutter grinder here goes surprisingly fast and without much drama. Same thing when I, when I invest a few minutes to grind a small boring bar from solid carbide. If I could buy I, I can buy a similar small carbide boring bar from um, P Horn or Micro 100, for example, and they are beautiful boring bars, but they cost quite a bit of money. And if I can whack one out of solid carbide in a few minutes on a debit grinder uh, without having to wait for the boring bar to ship to me, um, that's the way I'm going to do it. Especially as I need a lot of small form tools. One important thing about those D-bit grinders are the collets. No matter if you have the 5C version or the version that takes 355E deckel style collets with the 20x2 buttress thread, these collets only take nominal sizes. An 11mm collet will only hold 11mm. Minus a few, yeah, not much. Minus 0 0.005, like 50 micron undersize is okay, but that's already stretching it. They are made for nominal sizes. Um, for in between sizes, you can get either a 55E or a 5C adapter with an ER chuck on the end like this one. This is a 355E shank with an ER16 collet taper and nut. And this is quite nice to hold all size drills. The problem with these adapters is that you lose quite a bit of clearance to the, to the grinding wheel. Another option for small drills are straight shanked ER collets, collet chucks. Uh, this is an ER8, it's really tiny. This is nice for holding very small drills. You get a lot of visibility around the relatively small collet nut and it's just nice. This is ER11. And this just drops in a regular 12 millimeter collet in this case. Very nice, runout is relatively good. Um, ER11 collets and ER8 collets usually span 
uh, 0.5 millimeters in diameter. So it's nominal minus 0.5 millimeters. And you can chuck drills on the flutes with those. That's allowed. I did it in this case holding the 11 millimeter drill bit with the uh, 35 if you call it. I, I did it also on the flutes. Not, not best practice at all. But it's very short and very stiff. Uh, if you try to hold a drill sticking out this far and grind on the end, you will get a, a very harmonic experience. Um, the drill will vibrate like crazy if you do not have some kind of a rest. Like a spring-loaded steady rest. So I try to hold drills as short as possible for grinding. Goes for any tool grinding basically. One thing that you can do when you grind your own tooling and want to check if it's actually going to cut is use an indicator on the on the relief surfaces and you spin your tool and the cutting edge should be the high spot right here. This is the cutting edge and when we move behind the cutting edge the needle should drop. It drops all the way until here and this is the point where the secondary relief flat comes into play and then there is a little bit of a, a jump then it drops it, it drops even more and and then we hit uh, <laughs> we hit the next flute so and this ensures no spot behind the cutting edge can be higher than the cutting edge itself otherwise the drill would will just run and not take any material it needs to drop that's all the drills i ground for this video because that's all I have my, in my regrind bin. I usually um, collect tooling and grind them in a batch. That's faster than doing one by one when you need it. Same when I when I'm going to do the grind on this on this batch of uh, carbide end mills down here. I will do them all at once that will be way faster than doing one when I need it. So, is this a viable option? Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> For me it is. Um, small carbide drill is probably 15 to 20 euros. Larger carbide drill can quickly go up to 50 and more euros. Uh, same for the parabolic flute high-speed steel here in the center especially the longer ones those are fairly expensive not so much for these for this these standard high-speed steel twist drills uh, these everyday drills of course they also benefit from a nice machine grind hope you enjoyed hope you learned something and thank you all for watching see you next time